had arrived for the dog's summer ball and all the dogs in the world were lined up at the hall where a sign on the door said, Now please be so kind as to keep your coat on but remove your behind. Please hang up your bottom on one of the pegs and remember no growling or cocking of legs. So as they went in, every dog, pooch and pup took off their bottoms and hung them all up. It waited until Mr Twit had eaten the whole plateful. Then she said, You want to know why your spaghetti was squishy? Mr Twit wiped tomato sauce from his beard with the corner of the tablecloth. Why? He said. And why it had a nasty bitter taste? Why? He said. Because it was worms, cried Mrs Twit, clapping her hands and stamping her feet on the floor and rocking with horrible laughter. <laughs> Weekend, the lovely, lovely weekend. Sleeping in, breakfast in his pajamas, morning TV, afternoon TV, evening TV. No school and no Miss Battleaxe for two whole days. In fact, there was only one bad thing about the weekend. Henry didn't even want to think about it. Has terrible tusks and terrible claws and terrible teeth in his terrible jaws. Where are you meeting him? Here by these rocks. And his favourite food is roasted fox. Roasted fox, I'm off, fox said. Goodbye, little mouse. And away he sped. Silly old fox, doesn't he know? There's no such thing as a gruffalo. Don't be frightened, the ladybird said kindly. We wouldn't dream of hurting you. You are one of us now. James decided that he was beginning to like his new friends very much. They were not nearly as terrible as they looked. Mr Fox and Mrs Fox and their four small foxes. Every evening, as soon as it got dark, Mr Fox would say to Mrs Fox, Well, my darling, what shall it be this time? A plump chicken from Boggis? A duck or a goose from Buns, or a nice turkey from Bean. One night, Billy had to stay with his grandma, but Billy couldn't sleep. He was too worried. He always worried about staying at other people's houses. The Trunchbull sensed what the child was thinking, and she didn't like it. Stand up when you speak to me, she snapped. What is your name? Matilda stood up and said, My name is Matilda Wormwood, Miss Trunchbull. Wormwood, is it? The Trunchbull said. In that case, you must be the daughter of that man who owns Wormwood Motors. Animal is half so vile as Crocky Wock, the crocodile. On Saturdays, he likes to crunch six juicy children for his lunch. And he especially enjoys just three of each, three girls, three boys. Now this story starts when Mr Noisy was asleep in his bed. In his bedroom, in his house, which is on top of a hill. He was snoring, and as you can well imagine, when Mr Noisy snores, that is a snore worth hearing. So quiet and serious, Elmer wants to laugh, so he lifts his trunk and shouts, Boo! The elephants are surprised. They jump and say, Oh my gosh and golly! Then they see Elmer. Elmer is laughing. The cow had wandered a long way. At times, when she had crossed stony ground, the tracks became faint, and Precious had to get down on her hands and knees to see them. At other times, though, the cow had made her way over bare sandy soil, and the hoofprints were very easily visible. They had been walking for ages and were beginning to wonder whether they would ever catch up with the cow when Poncho suddenly called out. Next morning, it was the roar of the dragon and not the cockerel that woke Izzy up from her cosy dreams. Rawr! I'm still here then, thought Izzy secretly pleased, but she was in for a shock when she went into the coal to collect the eggs for breakfast. These eggs feel rock hard, said Izzy, as she shivered her way around the hen house. It's that pesky dragon, said Grandpa angrily. 
The little blue fish whizzed through the ocean with his scale flashing. So it didn't take long before the rainbow fish was surrounded by other fish. Everyone wanted a glittering scale. The rainbow fish shared his scales left and right and the more he gave away, the more delighted he became. When the water around him filled with glimmering scales, he at last felt at home amongst the other fish. Five little monkeys jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. Mama rang the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. I'm so small, said the mole. Yes, said the boy, but you make a huge difference. What do you want to be when you grow up? Kind, said the boy. What do you think success is? asked the boy. To love, said the mole. Do you have a favourite saying? asked the boy. Yes, said the mole. What is it? If at first you don't succeed, have some cake. I see. Does it work? Every time. <laughs>